Today's video, I'm going to share with you seven ways in which you could soundproof a ceiling. There are many ways in which you could soundproof a ceiling, but in this video, I'm going to share with you seven soundproof ceiling systems that have actually been installed to thousands of real life homes just like yours. As we go through the seven ways in which you could soundproof a ceiling, you as a capable DIYer or builder or homeowner will be able to choose which is the right one for you, depending on your noise problem, your space available, and maybe your skill level. You'll be able to mix and match the different materials and techniques that I'm gonna share with you in this video to ensure that you get the right combination of soundproofing materials for your property. So it's gonna be a long video packed with loads of useful tips from actual soundproofing installers, so you might wanna get a method for taking notes, maybe even bookmark this video and use this video as something you can refer back to maybe when you're actually carrying out your soundproofing installation yourself. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion having soundproofed thousands of properties here in the UK. If you're a builder, DIY or homeowner looking to soundproof your own home, I do offer these online on-demand soundproofing education courses. If you don't mind paying for your education to get ahead, then maybe check out the links in the description. There's lots of free stuff in there, including the free masterclass class but also the link to register for the noise free DIY soundproofing course it offers step-by-step -step instructional videos whether you are doing your own home or want to add this to your another string to your bow for for doing actual renovations check out the noise free DIY soundproofing course it's filmed in hundreds of semi-detached and terraced properties taught to you by award-winning soundproofing installers all right enough of that let's get stuck into seven ways to soundproof a ceiling the first ceiling system I want to share with you is insulating the ceiling void with a rock wall and then going over the top with a 15 mil sound block board now whether you have a wooden joist construction or a concrete ceiling you still want to install at least a 50 mil rock wall to that ceiling void now I'll go into detail with concrete ceilings uh, systems a bit later on in this video remember with a concrete ceiling the mass is already there so at least a 50 mil rock wall uh, installed to that concrete ceiling with a wooden joist construction as long as there is a room above i.e noisy neighbors above or uh, maybe there's kids running around upstairs and you want to reduce that room to room transfer of noise as long as there's a room above you can mass fill the ceiling void now we use a an rw3 because it's the right density that's 60 kg per meter cubed and we find that that's the right density of rock wall for the actual installation and the different frequencies of noise for domestic homes uh, there are denser rock walls like a uh, like an rw5 or and there are less dense rock walls like an rwa at 45 kg per meter cubed we use the rw3 because it it doesn't bridge the gap between the joists and it's very difficult to put it in too tight as long as it's not a roof above i.e you're not soundproofing a ceiling below a flat roof or you're not soundproofing a ceiling in a loft to reduce road traffic noise then you can mass fill the void in between the joists and before the sparkies go commenting after seeing these pictures you can mass fill the ceiling void just make sure any larger electrical cables have room to breathe when installing the a1 non-combusting rock call to your ceiling void all right so if you have a roof above i.e a flat roof or maybe you're insulating a a loft conversion to reduce road traffic noise then don't go mass fill in the void you could cause yourself serious condensation issues if you don't know what you're doing if you're on the noise free DIY soundproofing course that's fine but if not get expert advice when insulating a roof because you've got to allow that roof to breathe you've got to allow that airflow on on that but if you've got a room above noise from neighbors kids running around upstairs maybe a flat conversion something like that then yeah mass fill the void when insulating the ceiling void, if we come across any waste pipes, like a four inch waste, maybe a bath waste or shower waste, we like to wrap that pipe to sound deaden that pipe with a 10 kg uh, per meter squared self adhesive tech sound. This sound deadens the pipes and reduces any water gushing noises. The tech sound is available from the soundproofing shop as well as a lot of these materials I'm going to mention in all of these ceiling systems. And if you use the discount code on the screen now, that should get you some discount. After you've insulated the ceiling void and maybe wrapped the pipes with a tech sound, we like to board over the ceiling with a 15 mil heavy duty sound block board. The minimum we would use is 44 kg per board. So that's 44 kgs per eight before sheet. You can cut this board with a Stanley knife. You might go for a few blades, but you slice it a few times 
uh, and then you just break it like any other plasterboard it just it might not break as easy as normal board we use a 40 mil drywall screw when we go directly to the joist and we use a 50 mil drywall screw if we're going over the top of an existing plasterboarded ceiling uh, just remember when you uh, have insulated the ceiling if you're going over the top of a plasterboard ceiling and you haven't insulated from above try to patch up all of the 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 sections what you've cut open to insulate yeah otherwise you've reduced the mass so once you've patched it all up and you're going over the top with this 15 mil soundboard board 50 mil drywall screw if you're going over the top of a plasterboard we use a 60 mil drywall screw on the older properties if we're going over a, an old artex ceiling for example and we always use a 75 mil drywall screw if we're going over the top of a lath and plaster ceiling now have the discipline to draw the lines before screwing the board up i know some of you are watching this have have plasterboarded hundreds of ceilings but we're dealing with sound here and the less times that you miss the joist the better so draw those lines. This first ceiling system, we're adding absorption, i.e. the rock wall in between the joists, and we're adding extra mass uh, with the 15 mil sound block board. This is providing that you've patched up all the area where you've cut open the ceiling to insulate it, otherwise you haven't added extra mass there. So patch up the ceiling, if you've cut open the ceiling to insulate, make sure you patch it up before you board over the, with the 15 mil sound block board. With this first ceiling system, concentrate on insulating all of the hollow voids and making the system airtight. Seal up all of the gaps all around the ceiling. Don't worry too much about a four mil gap that you read about everywhere. We go into detail with the four mil gap when we talk about clips and channels and resilient bars systems in those later systems. But for you, you haven't got a resilient layer here. So don't worry about that. Make it airtight. So have that discipline to draw the lines and make sure everything is sealed up to get the best results. So what sort of reduction in noise can you get from this first ceiling system? So based on you not hearing the noise down the walls, you put your finger in the ear and you've listened and you don't hear the noise down the walls and you don't have plasterboard on the walls, then you can expect a 25 to 30% human perceived reduction in airborne noise at those higher frequencies. Impact noise such as footfall and people walking around above, that noise will still come through it might sound slightly different if especially if you've managed to get 200 mil of rock call in between the joists before boarding the ceiling with that 15 mil sound block board but those noises will still come through you if you've gone from if you could hear clear conversation before then afterwards you can expect to hear maybe muffled conversation afterwards you will get a noticeable reduction in noise but you will still hear everything you did before okay let's look at ceiling system number two Ceiling system two, here we're using a resilient bar and two layers of 15 mil sound block board. So we've basically added a resilient bar and a layer of 15 mil sound block board. The resilient bars that we're using here are the ones that you can get from your local builders merchants. This is a great system if you're a developer and you need to meet part E building regulations, or maybe you're a builder and you've been asked to add a bit of soundproof into the renovation that you're doing right now. And it's a great system because the most of the materials are relatively cheap compared to most soundproofing materials on the market and most of them are now readily available from the local builders merchants. So this makes it a really good system if you have a big development with lots of apartments or maybe you have a big flat or apartment and you are trying to soundproof every ceiling in that apartment. With most of these ceiling systems featured in this video they are based on us mass filling the hollow void on a wooden joist construction as if you had noisy neighbors above you have people making noise in the room above and these are the sort of systems you would install to the ceiling to reduce that noise although a lot of the ceiling systems can be applied to a concrete ceiling construction I will share a few ceiling systems later on that are specifically designed for concrete ceilings with this ceiling system too, position the resilient bars at 400 centers taking into consideration that second layer of 15 mil sound block board so you might have two resilient bars very close together depending on the size of your room. What you want to do is position the resilient bars to take into consideration the second layer of 15 mil sound block board. So when you install both layers of board they're both staggered so there shouldn't be a continuous join all the way through both layers of 15 mil sound block board. Yeah so you want to start from one corner work your way back and then start from the other corner and work your way back to where you started and stagger the board. And that way you shouldn't have a continuous join through your two layers of 15 mil sound board. 
get it right with these resilient bars and you'll be able to reduce some of the lower frequencies of noise and some of the impact noise transmitting through the structure as well. When fixing that first layer of 15mm soundlock board to the resilient bars, we like to mark out the locations of where those timber joists are to ensure we don't put a screw in that location. We also like to mark out the lines of where the resilient bars are to ensure we don't miss where those resilient bars are. We want to put a screw straight through the board into the resilient bar but not at the location of where those timber joists are. Because we've now introduced a resilient layer, the resilient bar, we now need to consider that 4mm gap all the way around that perimeter edge. So ensure you have a 4mm gap off of all the flanking walls and any bulkheads that you have. There needs to be a bit of movement when installing that first layer of board and that second layer. You then seal that 4mm gap with acoustic sealant. On that first layer of board, we seal all the way around the perimeter, we seal all the screw heads, and we seal all the joints between the boards. But we don't often seal the screw heads on that second layer of board. And the main reason for that is because our plastering team always complains that the sealant gets caught in their trowel and wrecks their sealant. But if you're a plasterer watching this, uh, let us know how you've got on plastering these soundproof ceilings. So what reduction in noise can you expect? This soundproofing ceiling system too, using the RW3 rock wall, resilient bars, and two layers of 15 mil sound block board, you can expect a 45 to 50% human perceived reduction in noise from above. Because you've used a resilient bar, you're starting to reduce some of those lower frequencies of noise and some of those structural borne noises coming through. So you can expect a slight reduction in things like low frequency bass noise coming through, males voice voices, some structural bore noises such as footsteps and things clonking and clanging and falling on the floor above, you can expect those types of noises to sound a lot more distant, but they will still come through. Ceiling system three is very similar to two, apart from we're going to upgrade it with some specialist soundproofing membranes. Assuming that you have a bit more budget to play with, we're going to add these membranes in the right location to give you further reduction in noise. Now, there are lots of soundproofing products on the market these days, and they're all offering clever decibel reduction figures. But ultimately, your noise reduction will come down to your attention to detail during this soundproofing installation, the techniques you use, and your attention to flanking noise transmission, which is why we set up the noise-free DIY soundproofing course for homeowners, DIYers and builders to follow step-by-step -step instructions to ensure they get the maximum integrity out of those materials that they're investing in and the space that they're taking up in their home. Ceiling System 3, we're going to introduce a 5 kg per meter squared mass loaded vinyl. We're going to introduce this layer after the Rockwall RW3. Now it seems to be one of those magic combinations when you apply the mass loaded vinyl after the Rockwall. So you've insulated between the joists and then you stapled this mass loaded vinyl to your underside of your joist. If you use mass loaded vinyl on its own, say you apply it to the ceiling on its own for example, then you're not going to feel much of a human perceived reduction in noise and you think mm, that was a waste of time but when you apply it in combination with different soundproofing materials then you can get a significant reduction in noise Installing the 5 kg per meter squared mass loaded vinyl to the underside of the joist in this way is a difficult task. Installing it this way will give you a good reduction in noise, a reduction in noise that will put a smile on your face, but it is difficult. You don't see many videos online of installing mass loaded vinyl to the underside of the joist in this way. You certainly don't hear material suppliers promoting mass loaded vinyl in this way, and that is because it is difficult. It is a very difficult task to apply it staple it to the joist in this way but if you can do it and then make that layer airtight and then install resilient bars to that mass loaded vinyl that is a magic combination that we find and you'll see that on our walls video if you haven't checked out seven ways to soundproof a wall uh, have a look at that video you'll see that we use that combination on a lot of our wall systems and a lot of our soundproof studio installations as well now don't go thinking you can upgrade that 5 kg per meter squared mass load of vinyl to a 10 kg per meter squared mass load of vinyl. We find that the right combination is a 5 kg per meter squared mass load of vinyl or less. If you go upgrading that to a 10 or, or, or even a thicker, denser material, then you could channel the noise into the structure, channeling the noise into those walls or, or those other bulkheads that surround the perimeter of the ceiling. So 
if you are going to apply the mass loaded vinyl in this way stick with that 5 kg per meter squared mass loaded vinyl with this ceiling system 3 we're also going to add a layer between the two layers of 15 mil sound block board and here you can increase the density of that mass loaded vinyl and you can also use a tech sound if you're here in the uk or around europe use a 10 kg per meter squared um, tech sound if you choose but here we're installing it between the two layers of board or whatever you choose to install to those resilient bars installing a mass loaded vinyl or a tech sound to that first layer of 15 mil sound board and then applying another layer of 15 mil sound board can be quite tricky so one tip i can give you if you if there's not many of you or if you're maybe if you're doing this on your own with with a acoustic plus board winch or something like that then i would say instead of applying the mass loaded vinyl or tech sound to that first layer of board that's already on the ceiling maybe consider applying the mass loaded vinyl or tech sound to the back of the 15 mil sound block board and then winching that board in place. We certainly do that in more difficult to reach areas when we're going above stairs or on stairwell ceilings and things like that where it's quite difficult. That's something that we always do. So ceiling system three is you've insulated the ceiling, you've applied a five kg per meter squared mass loaded vinyl to the underside of the joist, you've applied resilient bars and then two layers of 15 mil sound block board with a mass loaded vinyl or tech sound uh, sandwich between the two layers of 15 mil sound block board. Adding these membranes to this system in this way will really distort the sound wave. You can expect a significant reduction in airborne noise by applying these membranes in this way. If airborne noise such as TV conversation music from the neighbors above is a real problem for you then I strongly recommend applying these membranes in this way you can expect a 60 to 65 percent human perceived reduction in airborne noise by applying these additional soundproofing layers in this way with regards to impact noise of footfall walking around things clonking and clanging on the ceiling above the neighbors running around upstairs then you can only expect a still a 30 percent reduction in those impact noises from this system unless you have a 300 to 400 mil ceiling void and you've mass filled that with a rock wall you can still expect to hear all of those impact noises still come through they will certainly start to feel a bit more muffled a bit more distant by applying the resilient bars and the and the membrane as we've shown you in this system but you you would still expect all of those impact noises to still come through Ceiling system four, let's step it up a gear now and really start reducing that neighbor noise from above. Here we're gonna use a timber batten applied to the existing ceiling. This picture shows we've applied it to a concrete ceiling, creating a gap where we can apply a 50 mil rock wall. Remember I said about concrete ceilings, the mass is already there with the concrete, but we need to install rock wall to get that significant reduction in noise. So you can batten out the ceiling or apply timber to the existing ceiling uh, depending on your space available and your noise problem will determine what size timber batten you apply to the ceiling for example you could use a 25 mil by 38 mil batten and apply that to the ceiling use an a 25 mil rwa rock wall and use an rwa because at the time of filming the RW3 doesn't come in a 25 mil thickness. You could use a 2B2 batten, which we've done here for most of our concrete ceilings, I like a minimum of a 50 mil rock wall applied to any ceiling really. And here we've used a 2B2 batten with a 50 mil RW3 rock wall. Or here we've used a 3B2 batten using a 75 mil RW3. Jim, why would you batten out the ceiling, you might ask? Well, there are various reasons why you might batten out the ceiling and apply timber to that ceiling first. Uh, one reason would be maybe it's an Artec ceiling. Some of those old Artec ceilings, is you might be unsure whether it has asbestos in that ceiling and you don't want to break that Artec ceiling. So going over the top with a, with a batten, if you have that space available, uh, a 3B2 batten or 2B2 batten applying that rock wall over the top of that Artex ceiling means you don't have to break that ceiling. This is for, you know, if you have an Artex ceiling and there's neighbors above, you don't have access uh, to the ceiling above. Maybe it's one of those old lath and plaster ceilings in place and you don't want to break that lath and plaster ceiling. Maybe you're one of those people that have already taken down a lath and plaster ceiling in your, in your days where you've 
renovated houses back in the past. And you're like, I'm not taking down another lava and plaster ceiling. Well, whenever we come across a lava and plaster ceiling, if it is intact and it's all in good condition, I will always try to leave it in place because a good condition lava and plaster ceiling is the equivalent of resilient bars and one layer of board. So it, it is really good for sound if you can leave it in place. It certainly offers a lot more mass than your, your usual plasterboard ceiling. Another reason to apply timber battens to the ceiling it would be if you don't own that area above the ceiling. If you've got noisy neighbours above making noise and you're unsure whether you own that area or your neighbour owns that area or maybe the, the leasing company owns that area, you're unsure whether you're allowed to insulate that void then that would be another reason to go over the top of the ceiling. With a, with a timber batten and insulation. Or maybe you have a concrete ceiling and you don't have the choice to insulate it. Going over the top of a concrete ceiling with a 2p2 batten allows you to get that 50 mil insulation before applying uh, the clip and channel system. Now we would always apply timber battens to a ceiling rather than going directly to the ceiling with a clip and channel system. Going directly to the ceiling with a clip and channel system, what we find is it just produces too much resonance between the highly reflective, say, concrete ceiling and the highly reflective sound rock board. There's just not enough space to get enough rock wall behind the clip and channel system and it is an area for sound to resonate. Let us know what you found in the comments down below. For me, I've just not got enough testing data in real life homes to show that the sound is, doesn't resonate between the highly reflective concrete ceiling and the highly reflective board, channeling the noise into the walls uh, I just find that with in real life installations there's just not enough evidence to say that that is a good way of installing these clips and channel systems but I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below after we've insulated the battens that we fixed to the existing ceiling, we apply the clips with a 50 mil wood screw. Sometimes we upgrade the system like we've done here with a mass loaded vinyl, like I said, in the in system three. And that's depending on your noise problem. If you, as I said, if you've got a lot of airborne noise and it's good to apply that mass loaded vinyl to the timber battens in this way. When the channels are in place, sometimes we install a bit more RW3 between the channels, especially especially if you've installed a, a mass loaded vinyl. As long as the channels are not compromised, you don't put the rock wall in too tight, the insulation is, is positioned in between the two channels so the channels can still move, they can still have their resilient. If you're installing additional insulation in this way between the channels, we like to use a contact adhesive to apply the additional rock wall to the gap between uh, that's created by the clips and channels. Over the many years of installing clips and channel systems, we found to get the best results, it's important not to have a big air gap between the clips and channel systems. Personally, I don't like more than a 45 to 50 mil air gap when using the clip and channel systems. I believe that the sound can resonate in that area and I think it's better to fill that void with a rock wall, especially if I've used a mass loaded vinyl fixed to the uh, existing ceiling void. And the next layer is a highly reflective sound block board. That's an area where sound can resonate. So it's really important for me to add that additional insulation between the clips and channel systems, as long as it doesn't compromise the clips and channel system. Also, when we're doing the installation, it's peace of mind for our homeowners that they've got the maximum amount of layers in that space available. A clip and channel system will outperform a resilient bar because they offer more decoupling and isolation from the existing ceiling than a traditional resilient bar. The noise from the neighbours above of them clonking and clanging above, that noise is in the structure. You see the noise is transmitting through that concrete ceiling down those walls, through those timber joists, through all of those building materials, and it's transmitting through those building materials more easily than it is air, more easily than me and you talking in the garden. So the more decoupling you can get from the existing structure, the more reduction in noise you will achieve. What you install to these resilient channels as your next layer will be governed by the space you have available, your budget, your skill level, your noise problem, and the low 
load bearing of your ceiling. Here are just a few combinations of soundproofing materials which you can apply to those resilient channels. Now they all offer really good mass and again it comes down to the installation method and you addressing all of those different noise paths which will determine you being able to sit in that room and not hear your neighbours above. Now what we like to install to the resilient channels is a maxi board. It's a highly reflective cement particle board consisting of a 10 kg per meter squared mass loaded vinyl and a dense fiber board. Now these are expensive little boards but the magic combination of materials of how they're manufactured together with their interlocking qualities they offer superior reductions in both impact and airborne noise especially when applied to a clip and channel system to a ceiling. I'm not sponsored by SRS Maxi Board, I'm not tied to any material supplier in any way, but these boards are something that we've been using for over a decade now. My installation team and, and QuietCo are best known for their reduction in noise, and this is something that we've been using for, for many, many years now, and it's something that I recommend as a good, uh, a good mass, a good combination of materials which you can apply to this ceiling system, uh, and it gives significant reduction in both airborne and impact noise. I'm not tied to any particular particular material supplier but the soundproofing shop have given me this discount code to give to you guys and that gives you a bit of discount on all of the materials that I've mentioned in today's video. The guys at the soundproofing shop are certainly not new to the industry they've been around for as long as we have and they know their stuff and they actually care about your soundproofing installation and your noise reduction so give them a call see if they can help you out with some discount off of some of these materials. So when we're using the clip and channel system we still mark out all of our lines of where the timber joists are and we mark out where all the resilient channels are and we still use a four mil gap all the way around the perimeter. The next layer which we apply to the maxi board is a 15 mil sound block board and we fix that using a 50 mil drywall screw. You see you can't plaster a maxi board there's there's too many joins and the, the ceiling will look awful full of cracks and hairline cracks if you try and plaster a maxi board even if you apply a PVA. It's it's too porous in my opinion so you've got to apply something to it and you could apply a nine mil board but you've got to apply something to it what we like to do and for this system we're applying a 15 mil sound block board over the top of the maxi board as I mentioned earlier, there are lots of different combinations of what you can apply to these resilient channels, and it would be a very, very long video if I was to go through every one of these combinations. But two layers of 15 mil sound block board applied to these resilient channels would be the minimum. The next, you could use a 19 mil plank board and then a 15 mil sound block board. You could use a 19 mil uh, plank board followed by a tech sound 10 kg tech sound and then a 15 mil sound block board and that mixing matching of the different materials will really distort the sound waves another great product like the maxi board is the dbx sound board and then apply a 15 mil sound block board over the dbx board the dbx board similar to the maxi board you can't plaster it so you've got to apply an additional layer to it but the dbx board followed by a 10 kg tech sound and then a 15 mil sound board. Again, it's a very good combination, a lot of different layers in there. It's really gonna distort that sound wave. Again, all of these materials available at the soundproofing shop. Hopefully those combinations give you an idea of what can be applied to those resilient channels. Applying more mass than that, I'd recommend getting a structural engineer to calculate the load bearing of what you can apply to your ceiling. Uh, I'd also consider getting a structural engineer to calculate the load bearing of your ceiling if your joists are less than nine inches thick. Now using the clip and channel system in this way, applying the clip and channel system to that insulated ceiling, or maybe you've battened out the ceiling with timber battens, insulated and then applied the clip and channel system, and you've applied a maxi board followed by a 15 mil sound block board, or maybe you've applied the DBX board and 15 mil sound block board to those resilient channels. By using that combination of materials, you can expect a 70% human perceived reduction in airborne noise and a 50% human perceived reduction in impact noise. Now some DIYers and homeowners have applied this system to the right age property and followed the four step soundproofing method and no longer hear their neighbours above by applying this system to their ceiling. 
That's how good this system can be. However, for the majority of people, low frequency bass noise, such as that, <laughs> that bass noise coming through, impact noise of footfall, walking around. If you've got neighbors that have renovated upstairs, they've got hardwood finished floors and plasterboard walls, maybe stud walls, perpendicular. They've created en suites and bathrooms upstairs, or maybe you've got en suites bathrooms and stud walls and and uh, you've renovated for the majority of people that have done that that clonking and clanging low frequency noise will still come through however it will be significantly reduced however i will say at this stage and i will mention this at the end as well if you've got hollow plasterboard walls maybe stud walls going straight up floor to ceiling or you know your neighbors have got stud walls from the floor to the ceiling maybe consider putting your finger in your ear and listening on the walls so yes for neighbor noise above listen on the walls because if you have a lot of noise coming down the walls there's not really much point investing in all these expensive soundproofing materials because you're not going to get the integrity out of them so a test you can do right now after watching this video and after you've liked and subscribed of course could you put your finger in here and listen on the walls next time your neighbors are making noise because what you hear down the walls would determine what system you're going to use if you're hearing a lot of noise down those walls then it might be worth spending a bit of money on the walls rather than lots of expensive soundproof materials to the ceiling because you're not going to get the integrity out of those materials if you just apply them to the ceiling this is the one time you're going to actually want your neighbor to play that music and disturb your evening because when you hear it finger in the ear ear on the wall what do you hear down the walls hopefully you don't hear anything down the walls and you can invest in one of these really good systems but if you're hearing the noise down the walls i would maybe consider one of the you know system one two three don't spend too much money on your on your ceiling system hope that helps Okay, ceiling system number five in the seven ways to soundproof a ceiling. We're gonna get a bit more technical now and we're going to use a clip and channel system again, but this system is for those of you that have a low ceiling. Maybe you don't have much space available. Uh, ideally, this is for people with a wooden joist construction or, or, or those, th those of you who have really old properties and uh, a low ceiling but you really want to reduce that noise above getting the maximum you can in that space available we're going to use that clip and channel system but this time we're using the thinnest clip and channel system on the market today it's an lb3 genie clip system i've got a little sample here uh, this sits between the joist like that so if this is your existing ceiling joist and basically uh, the clip and channel sits between the joist so when you apply the 15 mil soundboard board for example you're applying it to the underside of the joist you're fixing it to the uh, resilient channel but with a five mil gap which means it's arguably the thinnest uh, resilient channel system on the market one of my installation teams are just soundproof in a studio right now they've got the rafters of the uh, pitched roof exposed so I'm just going to jump on site and show you how the genie clip LB3 bracket would work uh, on site with this clip and channel system this genie clip this is an LB3 bracket and that just sits to the underside of the joist and then you can either have it like that or if you really want a space saving system, you can fit it between the joists, which means when you fit your 15 mil soundboard board, you're fixing it to the resilient channels, leaving just a, about a five mil gap off of the rafters for this particular case. And this makes this one of the slimmest clip and channel systems on the market today. If you want to watch that soundproof studio installation from start to finish then click the link there but uh, but maybe watch this one first because we're just about to get into all the good stuff i'm just going to show you a quick clip of a practical lesson from the noise free diy soundproofing course it shows us leveling a ceiling in order to install this particular ceiling system and that will give you an idea of the technicality of installing this space saving ceiling system to an old ceiling how it fits in between the joists gives you an idea of what the noise free diy soundproofing course is about as well the easiest way to find the lowest point will be set a laser line up lower than the height of the um, joist that you're trying to be so for instance 50 mil lower and then you just go around with your tape measure checking them all and finding out which is the lowest one 
when installing the clips for ready for the channels we want to get ourselves a little bit of a channel like that an off cut and the clip and then once you've worked out your spacings because they're 1.8s so if we just take this one for example we're going to go 1.8 from that end and have the off cut from about here to here but then on this next timber we're going to have the bigger length here to here with the off cut there so we're constantly staggering our longer and shorter channels once you've worked out where your clips are going to go you can use that laser that we've set previous to set where exactly where your clip is going to go so the reason you've got this in place is obviously you're working off this laser line here so obviously if you're there you're clearly too low so you want to go up until that laser literally hits that point there and you can fix that bracket in and repeat the process throughout and you should have a perfectly level ceiling now as you can see we've installed the clips and channels and as i was explaining earlier you can see so we've got a big 1.8 meter length here and a small piece here and then on the next one we've done the opposite to create a stagger we don't overlap these channels at all because that will create us a little ridge and then that'll make some uh, make the bar rock or the next layer rock on that point the best way when installing these is to get yourself a little bit of an off cut of a channel offer it up to where you want to your laser line and if you follow this here once you get to that point then you fix through through the bracket with your screws that would remain in position you can unclip your channel and then move along to the next one and just repeat the process we insulate the ceiling in two parts before the clips go in and then again after the channels have been installed being sure not to compromise the channels by putting the insulation in too tight then install maxi board to those resilient channels or whatever you decide to install to those resilient channels whether that's a dbx board and then a 15 mil sound block board or maybe just two layers of 15 mil sound block board be sure to mark out the lines of both the resilient channel locations and the timber joist locations too. This avoids hitting a clip and making an unnecessary hole in the system. So you probably can make out where we've got these lines indicating where these channels are. The next layer of 15 mil sound block, we'll need to use a 50 mil dry wall screw to ensure it goes through both layers into the channel. And then what we would need to do is, depending on where we start, the board won't be a full sheet, it will be cut to the nearest channel and bar. So we'll want to make sure that we stagger the joints of the board and it'll be cut along a channel, ensuring we've got a good fixing point for both boards when they meet each other. Okay, so we've decided this is the corner where we're going to start with the board, coming back this way. So what sort of reduction in noise will this Ceiling System 5 give you? Well, it will offer a similar result to the previous Ceiling System number 4. It will offer a 65 to 70% human perceived reduction in airborne noise, and it will offer a 45 to 50% on those impact noises. For all of my developers here in the UK, with a 200 mil thick ceiling joist, using this clip and channel system, a maxi board and a 15 mil sound block board, we managed to meet Par E building regulations from below with only a 50 mil space loss. However, it's an expensive little system because you're using all specialist soundproofing materials. So it's not one if you have a large development or a big apartment with a huge ceiling but if you have a, the odd little ceiling here where you really need to meet part e building regulations and you don't have much space available this is a great system for you ceiling system number six well first of all thank you very much for watching this far i hope you're getting value from this video if you are enjoying this video please consider the like and subscribe button and if you have any comments or any questions please put them in the comments down below and i'll be sure to get onto them as soon as i can now ceiling system number six we're building an independent frame so we're building a frame isolated from that existing ceiling and what we like to do is install a timber frame fixed to the wall just below the ceiling actually a 25 mil gap from the existing ceiling so whether you've 
remove the existing ceiling to expose the timber or you have a concrete ceiling or even if you've decided not to remove that lava and plaster ceiling and you've built the ceiling frame a 25 mil gap so you're building a new frame with a 25 mil gap below the existing ceiling a 25 mil gap is best it just ensures you get that right isolation i wouldn't go less than a 25 mil isolation gap and what i'm what i'm going on about here is the gap between your new timber frame and the existing ceiling whether that's the existing timber joist or your concrete ceiling a, a 25 mil gap now what we like to do is install a 20 mil anti-vibration pad behind the wall plate so you fix your wall plates to each of the walls and then you're going to put timber new timber joists fixed to those wall plates but before you fix the timber wall plate to those walls put a 20 mil anti-vibrational pad behind them now i'm not talking a 5 mil isolation strip or a piece of foam or something very thin i'm talking about a 20 mil pad which you're putting not all the way across the timber you're putting just where you make those mechanical fixings for, for the wall plate to the walls and then then you're going to have a 20 mil gap which you're going to put rock wall in between so that behind that timber wall plate there's going to have a vibrational pads and rock wall the size of the timber that you use for your independent timber frame will vary massively depending on the size of your room your noise problem and what you intend to install to this timber frame if you're using the dbx board and maxi board and some of those specialist materials that have a lot of mass then you're going to require a larger timber than you would if you use in resilient bar and two layers of 15 mil sandblock board for example so i would say check with a structural engineer first to determine what size timber you're going to be using for your independent frame to give you some idea just as a guide and check with the structural engineer first for a four meter by four meter room i would use nothing less than a 5b2 timber and for a five meter by five meter room i would use nothing less than a 6b2 timber joist there's just some guides for you but please check with your structural engineer before you go installing this heavy duty soundproofing materials uh, to the underside of this frame for this ceiling system number six i would recommend a minimum of resilient bars and two layers of 15 mil sandblock board and if you think about it if you've created a timber frame you've insulated with a rock wall you've used resilient bars and two layers of 15 mil sandblock board all of that is available at the local builders merchants so if you're a developer builder looking to add a soundproof into your ceiling as part of the renovation that you're doing there you go there's a ceiling system and i hope it's saved you a lot of money anyway for what i recommend for ceiling system number six as a as an example uh, would be to install the 5 kg mass loaded vinyl to the underside of the joist of the existing ceiling so say for example you do have access to that ceiling void above that and you've pulled down the original plasterboard ceiling and you've insulated it with say 200 mil of rock wall instead of boarding over that original ceiling again before you build your independent frame i would say install one of these membranes a tech sound or a 5 kg uh, per meter squared mass loaded vinyl instead of boarding the ceiling then create that 25 mil air gap by building a frame fixed to the walls all the way around new new joist so you've got that independent frame with anti-vibrational pads behind the wall plates I would then install resilient bars, maxi board, and then 15 mil sandblock board. If you can stretch to having a mass loaded vinyl to that new independent frame before installing resilient bars, that would also be really good as well. From this system, you can expect an 80% reduction in airborne noise and at least 70% reduction in impact noise. Airborne noise will really struggle to come through this system. If your neighbors are playing low frequency bass noise, they're running around, you've got a lot of impact noise above, then this is a great system for you. Now, if your neighbors have have renovated if they've used dot and dab plasterboard on the walls if they've used other modern building techniques such as rigid insulation down the walls or or maybe they've put hardwood finished floors or they've put a new stud wall to create uh, en suites and and separating walls then 
you want to consider upgrading this ceiling system number six but instead of using a resilient bar maybe use one of the clip and channel systems uh, instead of those resilient bars to further isolate that ceiling replacing those resilient bars with a clip and channel system will further reduce the low frequency noise it will give you better reductions in those impact noises of clonks and clangs things dropping on the floor but really it's all about the frame getting that independent frame with that 25 mil air gap those anti-vibrational pads around the wall plate that is the key to getting a significant reduction in impact noises and low frequency noise because any one of these systems that i've already gone through system one two three four all of these systems can be applied to this independent frame depending on your budget your space loss your skill level and your noise problem ceiling system number seven now this is for those of you that have larger rooms or maybe a bigger development when it's a huge room and it's not practical to install this independent frame that we've just gone through in ceiling system six so what we've done here is we've connected the frame with a say noggin we've connected a, a piece of timber to the new frame to the original ceiling so what that means is it means you can use a thinner timber joist you can use maybe a 4b2 or, or even a 5b2 on those larger spans because you've you've taken you've spread the load bearing by putting a noggin connected to the new frame to the existing ceiling like this but again your structural engineer will help you determine how many of these noggins that you need but this is something that we use on those larger rooms those larger apartment ceilings where it's not practical to put a 7b2 8b2 9b2 timber joist spanning the whole length of the room to be clear this is not as effective as the independent ceiling frame that we've just gone through in ceiling system six where we're connecting the frame to all the perimeter edges but it's a really good system if you want to use those better high quality soundproofing materials you can use things like the maxi board the dbx board all these clips and channel systems to this frame on those larger rooms those larger apartments we've mass filled the original ceiling and then we've got that new frame with the laddered effect by creating putting those noggins connecting the original ceiling to the new frame and then we've insulated that frame as well it's not practical to uh, to install barrier mat to the original ceiling when you are using this this ceiling system number seven this ladder effect but you can install mass loaded vinyl to the new frame like the frame we've just talked about in ceiling system number six you can install all of these systems one to five to this new frame so again determine what your noise problem is if you've got low frequency bass noise a lot of impact noise above but you've got a large room and it's not practical to put those big thick deep timber joists to create that independent frame then this would be a really good system for you what we would recommend is install the mass loaded vinyl to the underside of the joist then use a resilient bar a maxi board followed by a 15 mil sound block board now if you follow that system using this uh, ceiling system number seven what can you expect this example would offer similar results to that ceiling system number six with an 80 percent human perceived reduction in airborne noise and a 70 percent human perceived reduction in impact noise if impact noises is the main problem for you then consider upgrading those resilient bars to a clip and channel system and if the neighbors have renovated or have hardwood finished floors uh, stud walls perpendicular all of that then also consider upgrading the resilient bars to a clip and channel system to do further isolation further decoupling for those lower frequencies and impact noises with all of these ceiling systems that i've mentioned here the first thing you need to do is check your walls don't go spending money on loads of clips and channels and expensive soundproofing materials until you've checked your walls put your finger in one ear and put your ear on the walls next time your neighbor's making noise if you hear the noise down the walls then maybe consider the seven ways to soundproof a wall video have a look at that you're looking at putting a 35 mil system or maybe even a 50 mil system if you're hearing everything down the walls to your walls if you hear the noise down the walls then that sound resonating down the walls you need to sound deaden those walls the walls would be like a ringing drum symbol you need to put your hand on it you need to sound deaden it. don't go putting something in front of it don't go putting these clips and channel systems directly to the wall you need to sound deaden those walls for the best results Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out all the free stuff in the description down below. Get your free copy of the Noise Free Home and maybe consider joining me on one of my soundproofing masterclass. It's free to attend and what's quite refreshing, there's nothing to buy at the end, but you have to register. The link to register is in the description down below. I'll see you on the next video.